What is intelligence? I swear we all know it when we see it, but it's also hard to write down a definition that we can all agree on. So in this video, I wanna point out a bunch of examples, both in nature and in AI, that might surprise you. So as a human, it's easy to think about how smart I am, but there's a few animals that would probably disagree. The octopus is renowned for its problem-solving skills, and even tool use with the brain neurons that live in their arms. And the way their brain is spread out through their arms, they can move and think semi-independently. Equally remarkable is the concept of swarm intelligence, which you can find in hive insects like ants and bees. So while an independent insect might not seem super intelligent, as a colony, they demonstrate intricate behavior, including some basic math and geometry skills. Dolphins have complex relationships. They have self-awareness, they give each other names. Ravens, pigeons, and crows can all use tools to solve problems. And they all have the ability to recognize a human face. Elephants experience empathy. Slime molds can solve a maze. Spiders can use strategic thinking. And last month, scientists figured out that the Rassy fish can identify itself in the mirror. It has some self-awareness. Now you might associate intelligence with something like a child who's negotiating to play with a toy for longer. And you'd be right, this is indeed a sign of intelligence. But what if I told you that computers with the power of artificial intelligence are also exhibiting many of these same behaviors? Because remember, when artificial intelligence is being run on a laptop, it's not a program. It's not carrying out pre-programmed instructions. It has learned to think on its own, to carry out a task independently. And we are witnessing its evolution. It's just noticeable now because it's evolved to a point where it's doing impressive things. But a lot of scientists think that when it does impressive things, it's just a few steps away from doing super intelligent things. This conversation should be relevant to you because when that happens, it might shift the world order. And separate from the conversation about how human it is or how conscious it is, without any of those things in consideration, it can still be super intelligent. As humans, we've sort of prided ourselves on being so highly intelligent compared to the rest of the animal kingdom. But with intelligence moving from biology to silicon, that's probably not gonna be the case any longer for us. So let's start with the basic question. What is ChatGPT's IQ? Gen Z's favorite life cheat code, ChatGPT has just scored a 155 IQ on the IQ test. Now to put that into perspective, that means that it outscored 99.9% .9 of humans who took the same test. ChatGPT is only gonna get better, and this current one has also already passed the US medical exam, multiple law school exams, Amazon's technical review, and it shows a theory of mind around where a nine-year-old would be. So I think it's safe to say that ChatGPT is really close to being considered super intelligence, which is both an exciting but also an unsettling reality we have to learn to live alongside these superhuman intelligent agents. Okay, so at this point, maybe I'm hyperbole, maybe I'm just using it to get the view clicks. Well, obviously that's not true. Look at how many subscribers I have. Neural networks are not simulations of a human brain by any means, but the mechanism, the core mechanism of how they work is very similar. Human brain neurons receive signals from other neurons through their dendrites, the connections between them. There, the information is processed and then it's sent out through the axon where it goes back into more neurons. In a striking in a similar way, a parameter, which is a digital version of a neuron, receives an input signal, which is a quantifiable number, which is sort of similar to how much electricity goes into a neuron in our brain, which are then processed through a mathematical transformation, which isn't that much different than having a chemical gradient in the human brain. And that unique threshold is then either triggered or not and sent out to the next set of neurons, the next layer of them. You know, in our mind, we can see it and smell it and feel it and relive it. And there's emotions and social elements to what, what we're thinking and what we're describing. But still, fundamentally, there's a striking similarity to the way artificial intelligence uses neural networks that tune over time and the way that the human brain uses neurons connected to each other that are tuned over time. So imagine computers before artificial intelligence were a chef that's working at a McDonald's. A chef at McDonald's just has to follow the instructions. They're all coded, it's all explained. You take that, you unfreeze it, you cook it to this temperature, degree, whatever it is. It's a step-by-step -step process with no deviation. But a computer with artificial intelligence can learn in the same way that a human can. So they're more like a chef that's in a kitchen able to make whatever food he pleases. In a recent research paper called The Sparks of AGI, which came out of Microsoft, the researchers showed how one of the standout abilities that ChatGPT has is the ability to think logically about placement in three dimensions, which really caught some of us by surprise. A city building game in 3D. On the terrain, there's a river that goes from left to right. Does it know left to right in reference to something? 
It does, I don't know how. So first it has to realize from our perspective how this would look and what below even means. Then they want a city with many high rises above the river and oddly four buttons with specific colors at the bottom. Now the cool thing is the crude drawing that it could use with the programming language works fairly well, but when you take the same prompt and then give it access to another tool that actually does text to image generations with the same prompt again, look, instead of generating some kind of random city like you would get putting the prompt directly into Stable Diffusion, you actually get what you asked for. The reason this is notable is because inside of ChatGPT's brain, there is an understanding of how objects are arranged in the real world, what they should look like, and in the other system, there's a good image generation tool. So together, it can achieve way more. This is one of the reasons why ChatGPT with plugins is such a game changer. But when you give it a calculator to actually just type the calculations in, it does way better. So why not both program an artificial intelligence that can do some level of mental math, but also just give it a calculator, which isn't an artificial intelligence based system. Fundamentally, a calculator is a program. It doesn't have the same kind of creativity that an AI does or that we would. That's why we lean on those kind of tools. And now that ChatGPT, the more human-like brain is accessing the programmatic world that we've already built to accent us as humans, it's going to get super charged. So I had to throw this one in here. I just read it this morning, but there's a new UK law now that makes lobsters sentient. Now over time, humanity has gradually broadened its understanding and acceptance of intelligence. We've come a long way from the regrettable history where we didn't treat all races as equal. And as science and humanity progressed, we kept expanding that to more and more animals and more and more different ways to think about a society. Now of course, there's certain people in parts of the world where the progress wasn't all equal, but now the world has a much better sense of the intelligence and emotional damage that intelligent animals in captivity, monkeys, whales, dolphins have had to go through. And as of today, octopus, crab, and lobsters are starting to be thought about that same way. So changes in a UK law are coming thanks to a report from the London School of Economics. And they say that creatures like lobsters and octopus experience pain. And this pain and the distress that it causes is more akin to animals like monkeys and dolphins than it is to many other creatures. So this law is an extension of the animal welfare sentience bill. Crabs, lobsters, octopus, they are all considered sentient under law in the UK. We might see similar laws expand to not just include more animals, but potentially machine intelligence. So the question five years ago about how far super intelligence was, was probably pretty debatable. But I want to argue now that because of what I can point at, what exists right now with tools like ChatGPT, it seems safe to me to say that super intelligence is right around the corner. So ChatGPT right now, if it was a single person, would probably be the smartest person on earth. They can handle every kind of question from every kind of genre that there is with pretty good accuracy. And then it's got a few things that it flubs really bad. But generally speaking, it's super intelligent. But if you draw the line somewhere else and you're not ready to call it that, remember how fast it can digest information and it can make adjustments how much faster it can learn than any other person. And that digestion of information and feedback rate is going to go faster and faster and faster too, like its own flywheel. Don't get me wrong, we pack in a whole lot of neurons with a whole lot of like basically uncountable ways that they can connect. That's what gives us such power. But they can either be trained more to make it smarter or you can give it more neurons. We could have 10, 20, a hundred trillion parameter models someday in the future, in the next couple decades at most. So for a human to write a book, we might have first an idea about a character and then we sleep on it. And then we think of a new scenario and then we sleep on it. And we write the first few pages and then we sleep on it and we constantly tweak. With reinforcement learning, you can have two different artificial intelligence. One comes up with an idea, one evaluates it, sends back the feedback. The next one comes up with a character, evaluates it, sends it back, comes up with a situation, evaluates it, sends it back. And the whole book, the whole back and forth of writing that could be done like that. But just to step back from a consciousness point of view, if ChatGPT digests a funny joke, somebody feeds that information into it, does it laugh to itself? Well, let's start by reflecting on ChatGPT's growing resemblance to humans. Now it's nourished on human text, so it's learned about our world through reading. And even though it can say back to us through text, it feels an emotion, does it feel the emotion? Probably not if it's just text that it learned and text that's coming out of it in a statistical way. But a better answer for the question deals with the complexity of the way that we evolve in the first place and the way that it has evolved in the first place. And that's a dynamic that AI just hasn't fully experienced yet, but when it does, will it 
feel and think like us. It might. So I think very quickly, ChatGPT is going to evolve into something that we don't just consider intelligent, it's something that we're going to consider super intelligence. Smash that subscribe button.